Hi, I'm Arius, and I play Blades. Enchanting is a very important part of your survival. It can make all the difference in winning or losing in the arena or even in the abyss. This enchanting guide will be geared towards helping folks understand the core basics of enchanting and how to properly set yourself up with the correct enchants for your build and playstyle. First off, let's talk about the basics. Here is a list of all the primary enchantments available and what piece of equipment it can be enchanted to. I will be flashing through the text so you can see it on the screen. Feel free to pause and review as needed. Starting with weapons. Now, the gauntlets. Next up, the various enchantments available on the helmet, boot, and chest pieces. Next is jewelry. And finally, shields. Great, let's move on to bonus enchantments. Simply put, bonus enchantments have a chance to proc every time your enchanter enchants an item. Each item has a chance to proc up to two bonus enchantments. When you find items in chests and from boss drops, they have a chance to also drop with up to two of the bonus enchantments as well. Before I forget, let me mention briefly that jewelry pieces come with a random bonus boost to specific skills, spells, and passives. Those different bonuses are determined at the time of picking it up from your blacksmith that makes the jewelry. The enchanter that sells you the jewelry or the chest drop that gives you that item. Based on my observation, the necklace is the only jewelry piece that increases your passive abilities like the armor bonus or the elemental damage bonus. The rings will give you bonuses to various skills and spells. Now, all of that is completely unrelated to enchanting. I just wanted to make sure I gave you all the information available to me. Now without further ado, here are the bonus enchantments. Please note, this enchantment list is valid as of the making of this video and is limited to my own experience with the game. I don't know if there's any other super secret enchantment out there, but I've compared my list with some of the more popular lists out there, and they match up pretty well. Another thing, some bonus enchantments only appear on certain items. For example, I've only seen Short and Stun on a necklace, never anything else. Another one I'm pretty confident on is convert physical damage. Those only seem to appear on shields. Same with the respective elemental damage being more effective at proccing their effect. I've only seen those on weapons and shields. Reduce maximum health, stam, magica, that's a shield thing as far as I know. Increase healing effects from healing sources are only on body pieces that I've seen, not weapons, shields, or jewelry. I think it would be neat if folks contributed to what I've mentioned and add their own experience or documentation of which bonus and chance proc on which pieces so that we all have it to reference. I'll even welcome any corrections because the more we all know, the better let's move on to enchanting the body pieces. 
based on my experience, as part of your build, you should decide how much stamina, magicka, and health you need. Or, if you want to do that bonus damage of the different elements. Remember, you can adjust your slider bar next time you do a skill reset to push more towards stamina or magicka. Only you know the cost of the skills you choose, so you should know how to manage your resources based on that skill rotation you want to execute. With that said, I'm going to just go right out and say that health has always been the way to go for me. The reason why this works for me is because 95% of my gameplay these days are PvP in the arena. And if you didn't know, your health gets a boost when you go into the arena. That boost modifier is higher if you have more health to begin with. So for me, it makes sense to go all health enchantments for my body pieces in the arena. Ultimately, it's up to you and your own gameplay. What about the resist element enchantments for the body? If you have many armor pieces that you can run various resist armor sets, then by all means, go for it. But I would not say that it is absolutely necessary. Now, what about my body bonus enchants? My favorite ones to go for, because they work for me, are increased healing effects from healing sources, elemental resistances, and shorten elemental conditions. In my mind, if I can heal myself more, that will help against all damage types. And since elemental damage is the hardest damage for me to deal with, I always shoot for the resistances and shorten condition bonus enchantments. Now is this what I have on all my gear? Only on some. I'm still working on the rest of my gear after these last two years and let me tell you why. All because of this guy, Severio, the biggest scam artist in all of Tamriel. Now, Lond and I have been keeping our eyes on him because something fishy is definitely going on inside that enchantment tower. So to tie it all together, body pieces give you bonuses to health, magicka, stamina, resistances to elements. My advice? Pick all health. You get nice bonuses for it in the arena. More health means you take more hits, means you live longer. Next, we talk about the pieces that increase your regen or elemental damage done. Those are gauntlets, necklaces, and rings. The gauntlets can be enchanted with restore health, stamina, magicka, based on damage done, or an increase to elemental damage sources. Additionally, you can also pick up those special bonus enchantments on all of the regen pieces, including jewelry, two slots per piece. Necklaces and rings provides a flat regen amount per second, or retaliates with elemental damage based on damage you take. So the more damage you do to your opponent, the more you regen. Alternatively, using retaliate enchantments triggers the enchantment to damage your opponent with your choice of elemental damage based on the damage you take. Again, it's up to you to decide what you want in your build. In my experience, trying to accommodate all resources is depriving you of the benefit of min-maxing your build. So, another way to put it, don't try to enchant some with health, some with magic, some with stamina. It could help, but again, in my experience, it's better to go with one or the other. Now, a minor lean towards one is okay, but there should definitely be an obvious favor towards one of the resources or if you're doing damage. For my build, I have to make sure I have a constant healing source. I get that from enchanting my gauntlets. 
or one of my jewel pieces with health. So as I do damage, I regenerate health based on damage done. And remember, one of my favorite enchants, increase healing effects, pair nicely with this enchantment to get even more health back. But I don't want to only focus on health. I want a nice regen to either stamina or magicka, depending on what build loadout I'm running with. If I want to cast more spells, I stack all magicka regen on my jewelry pieces. If I want to perform more skills, then I stack stamina. You may ask, why not go with stacking damage, like all to frost or all to poison? My answer would be, why not? That's the beauty of this game. It's new enough that not every possible option has been fully explored. Go out there and explore. So what kind of bonus enchantments do we look for now? I'd like to confidently tell you that one is better than the other, but without knowing all the different types of bonus enchantments that proc on which pieces, I can't accurately say. I do know that Shortened Stun only appears on the neck, and in my mind, anything that helps me recover faster from a stun is absolutely necessary. Again, that's my opinion, so yes, I always shoot to having that on my neck. For the rings, I like either prolonged target elemental conditions or physical damage ignores armor rating. I run a very high pressure damage build most of the time and those bonus enchantments help me to keep that pressure strong. Finally, let's talk about the weapon and shield. For shield, decide if you want to do damage or drain resources. I'll keep repeating this, but it's based on your build. If you want to run a frost damage build and all your armor enchantments are for frost damage, then obviously you want a frost shield and frost weapon. Think about what suits your build best and go with it. If you want an honest answer from me as far as which one is the best, I'll tell you this. I've been killed by elemental builds, resource drain builds, speed builds, and even penetration builds. I've also beaten every one of those builds. Of course we're talking PvP here. In PvE, I haven't really done enough of it to know exactly what works well. The only thing I do know is that I use the same armor I use in the arena in PvE or the Abyss, jobs, etc. But when I do run in PvE, I don't really change my armor. I just change my weapons based on which enemy I'm fighting. So going back to the weapon, it's really the same thing decide on what you want its purpose to be and enchant it with that main enchant. The bonus enchantments here for the weapon are really what's going to make all the difference. I like to go for the ones that first off support the elemental type of weapon. Frost for frost, poison for poison, etc. Same with a shield. From what I can observe, the elemental bonus from the shield also applies to your weapon. So if you can stack similar bonus enchantments, it's even better, which allows you to proc your conditions on your opponent even more. Or if you have a frost shield that increases effectiveness for poisons, but you have a poison sword, that should still give you a bonus to your sword from your shield, and vice versa. Again, this is based on what I observed. My effectiveness appears to go up and proc the condition more when I set up my weapons this way, either stacking together or stacking for the other, but I honestly have no way to confirm. So just know that I said that and then that's out there. Another enchantment I know to look out for on weapons are the drain maximum resource or increase resistances to different types of damage. Those are always very helpful so that's what works for me. 
I'd be interested to hear what works for you. Now that we've talked about enchantments and bonus enchantments, let's talk about when is the right time to enchant. When I leveled through blades, at first I burned a lot of resources enchanting every new main weapon that was stronger than my last. I grinded through a lot of jobs to gain experience and pretty much geared up with what I found in the chests. I began to notice that there were times when I would get pieces that already had enchantments with the cool bonus enchantments on them. I would keep that piece, then try to make matching sets. Why matching sets? Well, because of the matching armor passive bonus. If you don't have this in your build, then definitely try to build it into your next skill reset. The bonus you get from it is almost like tempering up your gear a few levels higher. In any case, I kept trying to make matching armor and enchant it with the bonus enchants I wanted. That's when I began to experience the shady dealings of Severio. He's a terrible man. You hardly ever get a bonus enchantment through him. You hardly ever get the right bonus enchantment. I want to go and enchant a fire sword. I have yet to get a fire sword that actually has the bonus enchantment to increase the burning fire proc. So, so disappointing. I have gotten a bonus enchantment on a fire sword that increases frost. But that doesn't really help me, as I don't really use too many frost shields. I don't really have one. I tried building one to get a nice enchantment on it, but again, Severio and his shady dealings. He keeps telling me it's not up to him. I think it is, but whatever. Anyway, I decided that I would enchant it if I had extra mats to burn. But once I started getting the high-end mats, like Grand Soul Gems that are used for enchanting max level gear, I decided to start saving. At that point, my focus began to be get to max level as fast as you can, then start working on building out your gear sets with the right enchants. A good thing to note, if you're going to skip on upgrading gear because you're saving mats, don't skip on the weapon. Once you start getting into high level jobs like four or five skulls, you need to be sure you do a lot of damage and have a way to recover health or mitigate their damage. If you get to a point where you can't beat any jobs above three, then go into the five skull job, abandon it, and a new one will pop through. Chances are that the new job may be an easier arena job or a three skull or less job. Bottom line, what worked for me was to get through the level grind first, then upgrade my gear. Now if I had extra mats while I was leveling and I knew I would not be needing them in my end game gear sets, then by all means, I would upgrade the stuff I got leveling. In general, if you don't care about saving the mats, upgrade your gear so you can get through those four or five skull jobs and quests. But if you're like me and you want to save the mats you know you'll be using at the end game content, then save it like a good squirrel saves his nuts. Well, that's all folks, for now anyway. Hope this was helpful, leave a like, sub and comment as this helps me with pushing out more helpful content. Cheers!